from a fallout shelter in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. That's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Oh, it's that time of year again. It's that time of year again, boys. That's right. It's that time of year when Fortune Magazine honors a very special group. These are the 50 most powerful women in American business. And what is so great about this is they not only provide you with the backgrounds and the names of these women, uh, their titles, uh, uh, how old they are, a little bit about each one of them, but they are good enough to provide you with photographs so you can see what the 50 most powerful women look like. And I have gone through the list, and once again, the women have not disappointed me. I'm sure these are talented people, educated. They make lucrative, lucrative paychecks, lots of perks. And uh, these are some very powerful companies. Let's take a look at some of the companies here, shall we? There's so many of them here. These are all the biggest names. You know, as you know, Fortune Magazine has something called the Fortune 500. Uh, biggest, biggest of American companies. Well, look at some of the companies represented here. PepsiCo, as in Pepsi-Cola. Xerox, these are the top of the list here. eBay, WellPoint, which is a health company. It's like HMOs and stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kraft Foods. Um, Archer Daniels Midland Corporation, yeah, they're feeding the world. Absolutely. You've seen the commercials. Sure. Oh, there's a bunch of them here. Procter & Gamble. It's bigger than Procter & Gamble. One of the great marketing uh, stories uh, in America, Procter & Gamble. You have Harpo Productions, which is not one of the biggest companies, uh, but uh, Oprah Winfrey is the CEO of that company. Uh, you have Avon Products Incorporated. You know, ding dong, Avon calling, and uh, Sara Lee, those are the top 10 companies represented here. The companies that have uh, 10 of the most powerful women in America, according to Fortune magazine. But what I encourage you to do, because they have not disappointed, is to, uh, you can go to our website, blowmeuptom.com, and be linked right into the Power 50. Fortune magazine does this every fall. They release the list of the most powerful women in American business. Now, as you will see, these women are very successful at what they do. But in my view, they had to be successful. Because these are not the 50 most bangable women in America. These are the 50 most powerful women in America. And there is an inverse correlation between power and attractiveness for women. The more powerful you are, the more money you make with the exception of the occasional pop star or the occasional actress. The more successful you are in business, the more likely it is that you look like a dog. And these women are just one after another. Holy cow. Let me point you to one, for example. By the way, if you go to blowmeuptom.com, it's uh, right on the front page. We have a link and you can see this. You don't have to go looking for it. Let's look at number nine, Andrea Jung. Of Avon products. Here's a woman, she works for Avon. She really likes her own products. A lot. Arda, you, you see this picture? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. She applies liberal amounts of the product because she believes in it. 
By the way, I think one thing Avon doesn't sell, tweezers. She's a company woman all the way. And that is scary. By the way, one thing I like about it, though, it smashes that stereotype about Asian women. You know that stereotype that, that, that guys are hot for Asian chicks? You go to number nine on the uh, fortune list of the 50 most powerful women in American business, and uh, that stereotype goes away immediately. You know, those women they'll say to me all the time, guys just like Asian chicks. They're just they're obsessed with Asian chicks. Well, this one I think it would be safe to say, not me. Tell you right now. It's pretty bad. Here's Here's how bad the list is. It's pretty bad when you look at a list of 50 women and Oprah Winfrey is starting to look hot. Like you're thinking, well, if I had these 50 women in a row, I could do Oprah. Number 11. <laughs> no, number 11. Wait, I, I want to go back because I, I didn't memorize the order of these women. I've just seen all the photographs, which I find fascinating. Number 11, Ursula Burns. Oh, my goodness. Um, there's no words to describe. Uh, I would run the risk of being sued if I said what I think about the way she looks, because it would be casting aspersions. Jimmy Walker? <laughs> well, she does look a bit like J Jimmy Walker, yes. But that, that wasn't what I had in mind. I, you know, I, it's a good thing I did not make my lesbianic remark, because you, you, <laughs> somebody might misinterpret that. But uh, you look at these chicks, and I'm telling you, it, they're, they're so hideous, they're so homely, that after a while you start looking at some of these chicks going, oh, well, if I had to. By the way, one of them is shot from far away. Number 14 of Johnson & Johnson, but she has the best name in the bunch. <laughs> Number 14, Christine Poon. <laughs> Oh, yes. I've always I've spent my whole life wanting to meet a woman named Poon. Where does she turn up on the list of the 50 most powerful women? Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Uh, some of these are just uh, atrocious. And it goes to what I always say. I mean, uh, this is very, very much like Darwinism here, okay? The uglier a chick is, the more likely it is that she's not going to get asked out on dates. The more likely it is she's going to hunker down, study hard, get degrees, move her way up. She'll be burning the midnight oil Fridays and Saturdays because who's going to be inviting her out to go to clubs or anything like that? She's not going to be busy banging her boyfriend or even having a boyfriend. She's going to be focused. She knows if she wants to make money, she's got to go out and earn it on her own because no man is going to pay her bills. And if you look at these women, this list yearly proves my point. It is empirical evidence. That the women who are the most successful at business are successful because they know no man is going to step in like Prince Charming and pick up the tab. They're just not going to. These women had to work their asses off. Though some of their asses are still pretty wide, but they <laughs> they had to work hard to get where they are. Holy cow. So you can go ahead and take a look. Now, you may not be able to see these. Many of our listeners listen as they drive home from work. You may not be able to see them. But trust me when I tell you, the 50 most powerful women in American business, as determined by Fortune magazine, are also 50 of the most homely women in America. And for me, every year I look at this list to see if things are going to change. And they don't. They don't. There's no nines or tens on this list. Nines or tens do not need to get degrees in college, do not need to study hard, do not need to burn the midnight oil, do not need to work. Hot chicks don't have to learn how to add and subtract, multiply and divide. They don't have to learn any of that stuff because some guy will do it for them. They don't have to learn how to read a newspaper. <laughs> they, they just don't. These are the chicks who didn't get a date for the prom. These are the chicks who generally didn't have a date on Friday and Saturday night. That's what they are. So uh, I invite you to take a look at the list of the 50 most powerful women in American business. Go to our website, blowmeuptom.com, and click on the link, and you'll be taken directly to the, the list of the Power 50 from Fortune magazine. Take a look at the photographs, and then you can certainly comment on these particular people or... If you can't see it, come on. Don't you agree with me? The idea is the women who work the hardest make the most money. 
They are the women who you absolutely would not want to touch with a 10-foot pole. Tom Likes. Tom Likes. 800. 500. Tom, 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 Tom. I know it's an awful thing to say, and I hope God forgives me for saying this, but I hope you catch AIDS. Really? The Tom Likes Show. <laughs> The Tom Likish Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Fortune Magazine, they do it every year. The Power 50. The 50 most powerful women in American business. And once again, not a bangable one in the bunch. You start looking, relatively speaking, yeah, well, I guess I could bang one or another, but wouldn't be your choice. 1-800-5800-TOM is your telephone number. Emily on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Great. Good. Um, I just had a question. Um, Because you were saying that um, these ugly, successful women probably didn't have dates, you know, um, on Saturday and Friday nights, and they probably didn't have a date for the prom. By the way, let me Um, point out here, before, before Emily gets to the point, let me just point out, this is what's called an ambush call. This is a call where the caller calls up sounding really friendly in the beginning. Oh, hi, how are you? And then what they do is, after they get your confidence, and then, by the way, they all think they, they all think they're the first ones who ever pulled this. Okay. After they get your confidence, they then go in for the kill. They go and take the axe out, and they start swinging. So when Emily continues, you're going to hear that she started off sounding friendly, but she's not as friendly as you think. Go ahead, Emily. Yes, I am friendly. I know why you're saying that, because I called you ugly, which you are ugly. I don't know what but. you called me. Well, I did call you ugly, so I... How would I know what you called me? I'm not, I'm not, I have not, I've never talked to you before. Well, then why would you say this is an ambush call? Because I, I can, nice. t- because, dear, I, not only am I one of the world's great crank callers of all time, uh, but I've been doing talk radio my whole life, and I know exactly what you're going to do just by the sound of what you're saying. Okay, well, whatever, think what you want, you're... No, it's you're obvious. Than well, I was right. Okay, well, can you answer my question? What? I haven't heard the I question. Want, I wanted to know if you had dates on Friday and Saturday nights, and if you... Yes, I home. did. You did? I did. Okay, so you're pretty ugly, so why do you think, you know, if you can get these dates and you went to prom... Because I was on the radio. Prior. I'm talking about before. I'm, I was on the radio since I was 14, dear. Okay, but you weren't famous and you weren't the big guy. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be famous. You know what? Uh, When you're on the radio, you're famous to the person who turns on the radio and can hear you. That You're famous to that person. Even if there's one person, you're famous to them because you're on the radio. Okay, well, okay, okay. Okay, well, I have another question then. Well, see, so I answered your question, didn't I? And you thought you were going to outsmart me, didn't you? No, I didn't. But you couldn't, could you? I just wanted to know why. I just wanted now to know you why know. you thought that these I've ugly women could I've already dared you. Don't have to repeat. Eight, you don't have to you repeat it. We heard it all. We heard it all before. Now, don't repeat yourself. Go to your new material. Okay, my next question is um, why you think they have to work so much harder because they're ugly. Because I think... Because, I, because the, attractive nice women... really hard. Uh, because attractive women uh, can meet guys who'll pay for everything, and they do all the time. I'm attractive, and no one pays for anything. I'm I'm, pay for well, fine. This is I not the really Emily hard. show. This is a show about people in general, not the Emily show. Do you understand? I didn't say that. It's not the Emily I'm show. Act like it's my show. I uh, no, care. but the point is, show. the point is, we're not talking about Emily. We're talking about women in general. Right. So even if you're not like that, it doesn't mean most women aren't. Okay. I know, but I'm just saying why you... I just answered your question. So many women, I the, just answered a... your question. Uh, whatever. Don't repeat it. I just answered your question. There she goes. And I would not say intelligence is one of her features either. Maybe she is attractive. You're right, Dean. She showed me. <laughs> Tell you what. And it was an ambush call, as you say. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. We're talking about the Power Fifty of Fortune magazine. These are the fifty most powerful women in American business. And if you go to blowmeuptom.com, dot com, you can see what I'm talking about. They're powerful, but uh, glee. Candy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Great. <laughs> um, this is actually my first time calling in. 
Um, I want to say I think you're right. I think that is true that um, that that if they're not so attractive, I think it is harder for them to get dates. But if they're powerful, I think that makes them attractive. But it and does. Uh, but dear, 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 men don't think the way women do. Okay, oh. men couldn't care less how powerful you are, how much money you make. We want to know what you look like naked. I, I don't even have anything to say to that. That's because how men. Right that's how that. men think. But I think women. You're right, because a lot of women, like us girls, when we talk about it, um, like especially with men, if somebody's dating a guy that's maybe not so attractive, if he has more status, you know, more money, or he's powerful, then we say, oh well, then that just added a couple more points to him. That's how it works. So men are not like that at all. Uh, men don't care about how powerful you are. Don't. So we don't care about how much money you have. We don't care. Okay. I mean, some of the hottest chicks, I, I, and I mean this when I say it, because uh -huh. I've made fun of the guys who do this for a living. Some of the hottest chicks I've ever seen work the register at a supermarket. That's true. That is true. And and I'm telling you, when you're a guy with money, they can tell because of the cuts of meat you buy and things like that. When you're a guy with money and you mm -hmm. invite a cashier out, she goes out with you. So you don't think that's true at all, though, that some men can maybe be like that? Well, some men can be anything. Some men are gay. Some men are Mormons. Yeah. Some men are child molesters. Some men are chubby chasers. Yes, some men <laughs> could be like that, but most aren't. The most aren't. I, I think that every woman, I think every woman can get laid. I think that, I just think that it's easier for women than it is for men. Of course it is. So even if they don't look so hot. Well, they can get laid, but by who? That's the question. Yeah, that is true. I mean, you go, you go down to Skid Row, you can get laid. I mean, you can get, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure women can get laid, absolutely. But the thing is, if you want to get laid by rich, successful guys... Then it's not going to happen. You better be really hot. We don't care what you do for a living. Okay, well, you have a good day. Well, you too. I just love it. They don't realize how inadvertently <laughs> and subliminally they're proving my point over and over and over. They don't even realize it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. I'm, uh, you don't know how many times I've tried to call you. Hey. Uh, okay. So I just want to say in response to Emily, and you said it wasn't the Emily show, <laughs> I am 25 years old. I'm an MBA student. I would consider myself attractive. And you said, generally speaking, most powerful, successful women aren't good looking. Right. I know many powerful, successful women who are extremely good looking. No, you know I many. No, no, dear. You know many MBA students. Right. But they have we do not know. Right? We do not know if any of you will become successful or powerful until you actually get jobs and work your way up the ladder. Being an MBA student proves nothing because many women go to college for their MRS degree, as you know. Right, okay, but I, okay, let's take me. I started a company right out of high school, very successful company. We just got a huge contract in Northrop Grumman. I am successful. I am 25 years old, and you make it seem like... Darling, you, you're not on the Fortune Power 50, and, and we're no, talking I'm about the most yet. successful women. Like be. <laughs> And you might like to be, but we don't know yet if you'll take a detour and meet some guy and have babies. And uh, I, I have nine married. I do have a guy. Uh, and the way you make we it have no like, idea what's going to happen once you decide to uh, take a detour. We don't know. What do you mean, take a detour? Oh, like, have kids and things. Right. Well, right. You know, there are powerful women. Let's take uh, Meg Whitman from eBay. She was very successful. She had a family. She married. Look what she lot. looks like, though. Oh. <laughs> right, good point. As but a man, I would not want to see Meg Whitman naked. Just my opinion. <laughs> okay, and I would agree with you, but I just feel like the way you make it... You know what I like to see naked? Like... I like to see her stock options naked. That's what I'd like to see. <laughs> but you 
just seems like the way you make it seem, it's like one or the other. If you're good looking, you can't be successful because you're going to depend on that rich husband that you're going to marry. No, no. If you're good looking, if you're good looking, no, no. If you're good looking, no, you're getting me wrong. If you're good looking, you don't have to be successful. You don't have the same motivation to be successful because guys are showering you with gifts and dinners and trips and condos. I mean, guys are offering you anything you want. And many women just break down and say, you know what? I'm hot. I deserve it. And that that's how they are. Okay, I would agree that, that there's a, a good portion of women who are like that, but there are also a good portion of women who just I wouldn't say want a good portion. On I would say there may be exceptions to the rule, but even you we don't know about yet. <laughs> that is true, but if you'd like, I can email my picture and you can... Darren, we, we don't yet know if you're going to like stay at it or if you're going to quit and be a, be a mom. We don't even know. Right, well, I know, I know. And no, I you don't know. You don't know. You don't know anything. I I, mean, I I don't know what's going to happen to me in five years. Do you? I, I'm amazed yeah, that you think I you do. I die. I mean, I don't expect on dying. But all right. So when you let's things. say you accidentally got knocked up, what would you do? But I take. I listen to you. I take birth control. What I, if you I act? Take, what if it didn't work one day and you were knocked up? Well, I don't plan on that happening. And what well, nobody does. I'm 25. I've been with my, my now husband. The, We've been married for two years. What happens I've been with him for five years, if never you get pregnant. pregnant? What happens if you do? Well, in all honesty, and I hate to say this and sound like a horrible person, but at this point in my life, I'm not ready to have a baby, and I would likely abort it. Look at that. Uh, but the thing is, even later on, you may just decide to stop down and have a baby, and many women do. Some of them do when they're 35 or 40. I have a very unconventional husband who is a spectacular husband. He is a marriage and family therapist. So he has agreed to be the stay-at-home father. So I oh will boy. be able to keep my career. And oh, boy. Well, uh, that's, that's wonderful. Maybe he can make a mandate and watch television tonight. <laughs> no, he is, very, he is very motivated on his own. He also has his master's degree in psychology. He is... Yeah, I just make it, you, you make it seem like people who get married young and who do all this, like the odds of them succeeding are very slim. Right. I don't agree with you. Well, That's the odds are good. slim because look at the power 50. These are the most powerful women in American business. Oh. <laughs> I just feel like you make it seem like it's one or the other. If you're good looking, you cannot be successful. No, I didn't say that. I You, okay, you I can be, you but you're not likely to be. But, uh, oh, oh, so if you're good looking, you're not likely to be successful. Not likely to be successful. I mean, successful at what? Successful at uh, uh, sucking the chrome off trailer hitches and uh, making your way to millions of dollars? You could very well succeed at that. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess that there are women. I mean, I go to UC Irvine, so I'm in Orange County. I see those women all day long. Right. Women. They're the Real Housewives of Orange County. That There's your proof right there. Right. I know. And I hate those women. And I aspire to not be those women. So, I mean, I you aspire like to not be those women, but let's talk about those women in Cota de Casa, for example. How many of them are CEOs? How many women in the, in my now, program? In, let's, take, let's take that TV show about Cota de Casa, the real Housewives of Orange County. How many of them are CEOs of anything? Uh, probably none. Right. And that's my point. Right, no, I see. I do. I see your point, that there are many a good-looking women who just sit back and let the man pay for Because them. they can. And if things don't work out with the man they're with, they can take half of everything he's earned. And I, I agree with you. There is a good majority of women like that. That's my point. Like while, sure. There needs to be the voice well, on your program. Well, but the that... point is, there, there, again, it, you know, it's amazing how women become all emotional and they, they, they lose track of the difference between the word most and the word all, and they don't know the difference. No, I definitely, I definitely know the difference, and I agree. But every time somebody calls in, that's always your point. And I just feel that it's nice to have the opposing view on here. That, And I know that women listen, and I know women agree with you. And a lot of the things, like it's 101, I agree with. However, the $40 date thing, not even possible in today's world. Oh, yes, that, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it you is. Get, if you go to a bar in Hollywood, two drinks, and you're done. Dear, you don't, you, well, first of all, you're not going to go to a bar that charges more than $20 for a drink. Okay. It's like $12 for a drink. Uh, again. It's not twelve dollars everywhere. I'll tell you what, at El Compadre on Sunset Boulevard, it's not twelve dollars. No, that's true. And I'm at El Coyote El on Beverly Boulevard, it's not twelve dollars. No, and I agree with you. And I'm I'm all for having. I'll give you a list of places where it's not twelve dollars for a drink. I don't have to go get a drink where Britney Spears gets her drinks. 
No, that is a very good point. And I like to frequent dive bars myself, so I understand your analogy. But And the best way to cheap out is you do a little trade. The best way to cheap out is you do a little Trader Joe's, you do a little uh, $10 Argentine wine or something, you bring it over. It's five and a half glasses in that bottle. Maybe you bring two bottles. And, no, no, and, and then I feel like that, that the like is 101 and the whole theory, I feel like it, it attracts the girls who do exactly what you say they're going to do. I yeah. mean, you want a high-quality girl. No, dear, dear, the, whether you're high-quality doesn't do us any good because we're planning on dumping you anyway. I, yeah, I forgot you're all about to hump them and dump them. Hump them and dump them. I mean, we're not talking about getting married. We're not talking about the mother of our children. We're talking about somebody who's going to give us what we need now. No, and I, I, I have to say I do think you serve a social purpose in letting men know that they do have to be protected and they do have to take responsibility and not all girls out there are great girls. I do agree with you on that. Right. <laughs> all right. Okay. Even if you're the exception to the rule. I hope so. I really, I'm trying to be the exception. But it doesn't matter. The point is, the rule. You understand what the point is? The 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 rule, the exception proves the rule. That's that's what I always say. No, and I agree with you. There are many girls who are just bad seeds. That's right. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you. Many girls who are bad. Being on the show. Many many girls. What's that, Darren? Can you uh, take me out? How do I want to be taken out? Kobe style. Kobe style. Speaking of Coda DeCasa, here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Tom like it. Tom like it. 100. 500. Tom, 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 Tom. I hate uh, smokers in line. Well, you may hate it. I hate lots of things. I hate fat women in tube tops. Should we make a law against them? Heck yeah. The Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show from an undisclosed location in Hollywood. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh, yes. Here we are together again on the radio, and the uh, Power 50 has come out. From Fortune Magazine, the 50 most powerful women in American business. And it is just uh, one dog after another. (laughs) Melissa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Melissa, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. How many times do I have to say that? My God. I couldn't hear you. There's music. There's music, and there's me talking over the music. Well, anyways, um, what I was going to say is, how sick do you get uh, of arguing with these women that think that they're the exception, when really, it's like, if you're so smart, why don't you see reality? Well, how I, many of the how many of those fifty women do you think understand their place in all of this? Like, if they wanted those millions, they were going to have to make it themselves. Good question. I mean, that right? that, that that it makes sense. But the, these women want to call in. They all want to be the exception to the rule. They will. Oh, and I'm not like that. I, there may be other women like that, but I'm not like that. Well, when I say the reality, when I say that most women are like this. Uh, that leaves the opening for some not to be like that, but most are. So what? I don't know. I just I think it's funny. And I mean, yeah, maybe women don't want to hear the things that you say. They don't want to believe it, and maybe they do know one or two people are ex- are exceptions. But the thing is, is that they keep arguing over and over. I mean, how many times do they call? They keep calling and they keep saying, "I'm different. I'm different," but they never admit like how right you are and that they actually understand how the world works and that you're right. Yeah. You know? And if there's an exception to the rule now and then, so what? Okay. It's true. Kathy yeah, Ireland, Kathy Ireland, who had very large breasts in the 80s and was a big model on the front of uh, Sports Illustrated. She has uh, formed a very successful company that makes, uh, you know, all kinds of, uh, of uh, stuff for your home. Yes. And it's sold by name in various stores. Yes. And uh, yes, her company makes millions of dollars. Yes. How many of those are there? Yeah, there's not. <laughs> 
I, I mean, don't know. I just think it's funny. I, I deal with women like this all the time. Um, I live in Orange County, and, you know, they're all beautiful, and they don't want to admit they're stupid. They never do. You know, well, but, nobody wants to admit they're stupid. It's admitting a weakness. Yeah, but, you know, it's like, can't you just accept the position that you've chosen? Like, you spend all of your time making yourself look better. You don't spend any time learning anything or knowing anything. Like, what What do you expect? Like, why can't you just accept your your flaws with your strengths? I mean, strengths are, I mean, being beautiful is a strength. You know, take it and run. Like, don't, you don't have to call in and keep arguing that you're both. You're different, you know? Well, I um, I totally agree with you, and I do not understand why they call, but they do, and that's how I make my living is talking to these morons who call up. But, but Tom, you've said that all women are stupid, and I I'm I'm not stupid. <laughs> that's that's a typical. Call. You said that all women are. Uh, you said that all women are. <laughs> I never said any such. You said all women are gold digger. No, never said that either. Isn't that female logic, though, all and always and, and never? and? <laughs> well, I'm not like that. Yeah. I'm can, not ugly, can. and I'm not a gold digger, and I'm smart, and I graduated magna cum laude from my college. I'm not like the women you're talking about. Yeah. But you said all women are like that. I guess it's, it's, what, it's why people listen to your show, though, right? Because um, they know that some way you're going to prove them wrong over and over again. No oh. matter what anybody calls in to say, they can't win. They keep trying, though. They keep trying. But yes. They, they can't ever like. They can't ever come up with a real a winner. Yep, <laughs> I, I, I I completely understand, and I agree with you. Thank you, Melissa. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Long time, first time. Yes. I I got a question for you. Aaron, what are what are these women who are making this kind of money? What are they doing for husbands? Because since we know that women don't, you know, marry below their income level, and guys that are at their income level certainly aren't going to touch a fat and fugly, what is it they're doing for uh, for husbands then? Well, some of these women, you have to understand, some of them are not married. Some, okay. I, I imagine many of them are, but some are not. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Some of them are not married. Uh, I have dated women like this, uh, but I, can I tell you something? I, I've dated... The, you know, some of those exceptions to the rule we hear about, yeah. the more attractive ones. Yeah. But let me tell you how it works. Uh, you're their booty call. Okay. They get home at 11 o'clock at night after working, you know, burning the midnight oil, and they call up and they say, what are you doing? I got a bottle of wine. You go over there. You bend them over the uh, the arm of their sofa. Yeah. You bang them really hard, and you leave. They don't have time for anything else. Well, you, 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 you got their BlackBerry going you off. You got their BlackBerry going off in the background. You got their phone ringing. What's that? Oh, you got their BlackBerry going off in the background while you're banging them. You got their phone ringing. Okay. Well, the the the, the thing that I, that I was also thinking about is Jesus. that most of the time when I've dealt with any women that are you know at any kind of you know position of power or authority, they're constantly reminding you of the fact that they've got that right. power and authority. Yeah, but here's the deal. Uh, you see, if you if you don't stay around them too long, uh, the reality is, as I have found with a lot of these women, that they're so busy being bitches at the office and, and ordering people around. Uh -huh. What they like is a guy who comes in and puts them up against the wall and orders them around. That's what they uh, like. Uh, okay, I get it. So someone comes in, takes care of business, and leaves so they can go do their... Uh, the most powerful thing. women, like a good spanky spank, I want to tell you right now. Yeah, uh, you got it. You got it. You got to crack that ass. Yeah, well, I, I guess it's a good thing that they're staying up late burning the midnight oil because the only guys that are going to come around are the guys that are making the 2 o'clock booty call, right? That's right. <laughs> Listen, Tom, take me out to match game style. Match game style. All right, here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here we are with the... Uh, the annual fortune list of their Power 50. These are the 50 most powerful women in business. If you're near a computer, you can get a look at what they look like. You can actually see them. Go to blowmeuptom.com and click on the very first link in there, and you will see the list of the Power 50. And you can decide for yourself if you think these women are bangable. Here's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? This is Mike. Yes, I just said that, Mike. <laughs> hey, uh, first time, long time. Um... 
Yeah, I was just wanted to say there's something, you know, I'm 30 years old now, and there's something I've been telling my buddies for years, you know, everybody really, that when it comes to dating, you know, a guy could walk into a McDonald's, for example, and see a hot chick working there. Yeah. And he'd go for it. But on the reverse, if a girl were to walk into McDonald's and see a hot guy working there, it doesn't matter. He works at McDonald's. She's not going to think twice about it. How many guys listening to this show have picked up a receptionist? We've all Um, done it. Yeah. Uh, Yet, how many guys have, uh, you know, picked up a a multimillionaire female? Right. And another thing, uh, when it comes to men and women, women are after money and power, and men are after youth and beauty. So the older we get, you know, men attain more of what women want, and women lose what men want. Well, we've said that many times. The older we get, the more we're worth. The older women get, the less they're worth. It's a fact. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, I just wanted to call and get my two cents in. Thanks, Dad. Glad you did, son. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Al on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, you're the best. Thank you. Tom, I once spent the weekend at Meg's house doing some work for her, and I saw her in her workout sweats. Yep. And it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great woman, but it wasn't pretty. <laughs> and I don't recommend it for the women out there. <laughs> oh, baby. It wasn't good. Tom, take me out, Lacey Peterson. Oh, tasteless as always. Ever. Hey. Ever. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great, Tim. Listen, I'm a second-time caller, big, long-time listener, a great call. You are the man, man. Thank you. Yeah. And one thing that I've seen from listening to your show so much, and I watched by accident one night, The Bachelor. Oh, my God, you talk about it's reverse. Here's the guy with all the beautiful women wanting him, and what... Stupid, beautiful women I've seen her, and their motives, you really get to see it. And I mean, it just makes what you preach even more, but it's visual. Well, that's that's what it's all about. I mean, uh, of course, these TV shows, reality shows are completely fake anyway. Uh, there's very little truth in a reality show, very little reality, in short. Right, but the motive I've seen in real life compared to a lot of girls that I've been around, at the same time, you get be a fly on the wall. I happen to be in places where just sitting with a lot of girls. They're no different than those chicks on The Bachelor, and they literally, you know, it's like, it's just amazing, you know. Right. And it's, 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 it's just the epitome of what you preach about women, but I just saw it once, and I had to watch it again like a car wreck, looking at a car wreck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's certainly true. I uh, thank you for that, Tim. Let me get uh, who else here? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mark. Hey, how's it going there? Great. Hey, I just wanted to say myself personally. You know, when it comes to these Fortune 500 women, they might be fugly, but hey, personally, if they were to let me drive to Maserati around town, pay for my lunches, pay for my dinners, uh, you know, buy me nice things. Yeah, why not? You know, I might call me a male. Whore, because you, you because you would have to become aroused looking at them naked. Well, you know, you might have to compliment them. Oh, uh, well, see, complimenting is one thing. I agree with you on the complimenting thing, but them being ugly, a lot of them, you know, are just willing to get what they can take. And hey, I'm willing to, you know, give them what they want in order to get what I want. Well, there are some guys who do that, and, uh, you know, I don't blame you, because women certainly do it. If you if you can stomach that, fantastic. Oh, yeah, I'm all about it. I mean, like I said, if they're going to let me drive their Maserati around town and, you know, buy me nice things, if the women could do it, I could do it. That's the way I believe. Hey, can, uh, can you take me out? Uh, um, let's see. Go ahead. Uh, take me out. Uh, blow me up there. <laughs> That's like the person that goes in uh, to, to Baskin Robbins and says, uh, "What are the uh, thirty-two flavors? Thirty? It's what was it? Thirty-one or thirty? What are the thirty-one flavors? We got uh, vanilla. We got chocolate. We got butterscotch. We got vanilla fudge. We got uh, bubble gum. Uh, we got cheese pizza. We got pepperoni. We got cockroach. We got pineapple. And we got uh, charcoal." Uh, we got uh, lemon, we got lime, 
Yes, we got juji fruit. We got, yeah, okay, I'll take vanilla. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. That's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.